Uh, We're gonna make it quick. Hi everybody, this is Sadie P. Welcome to the channel and we're gonna read Dear Sadie P. What did I say? <laughs> what do you mean? What did you say? I don't know, I wanna make it quick and I don't understand anything anymore. The reason why I wanna make it quick is because we are dying right now. We close all the windows and you know we, uh, and actually, somebody won't let me put the AC on because it's not you, like it for, makes a difference. Yeah, but uh, if you turn this AC on right now, what happens? You have to wait and you have to pump with the fan, okay, okay, and it's okay, noisy. Okay, okay, we're doing the <laughs> CMP, and I, I have to apologize for neglecting you guys a little bit. Okay, but we've kind of just been enjoying the summer and taking it easy, honestly. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see what we're up to, like on the daily, I'm posting more on my TikTok, so I'll put the link here. Like it's just at CMP. I think that's our TikTok. And um, another shameless plug for my brand new passion project, uh, my podcast yeah. with my psychic friend, Abby. I'm going to put that in the description. Check it out. Our newest episode just came out today. New episodes every Thursday. And we're talking about the afterlife and very cool things about the afterlife. Yeah. And the loving it. Realm. Loving it. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Let's get into the letters. Hello, dear Sadie and Paula. I want to ask for some advice. The thing is, I fell in love with my plastic surgeon. It's so strange, but I knew that would happen. The first time I met her was seven years ago, but then I was too young for such an operation. And now when I saw her again after seven years, something happened. The operation was successful. When I opened my eyes after anesthesia, I saw her and she said, everything is fine, sunshine. Since then, I've been constantly watching her, how my rehabilitation is going, and I can't stop thinking about her. The problem is that she's 49 years old and I'm 25. She's an insanely beautiful, smart woman. It's very interesting to be with her. I've never felt anything like this before for anyone. When I hug her, it was the best two minutes of my life. <laughs> I know that she doesn't have a man and there's an adult son who's 20 years old. He lives in another city. Okay, she has such a strong character. I can't even imagine any man next to her. By the way, one day when she removed the cast for me, I gave her a gift, handmade candles, in which I put a letter. I wrote how grateful I was to her, that next to her the operation was not all terrible for me. Also, I wrote about what an amazing and wonderful woman she is and that I would like to get to know her better, not only as a doctor. In the evening of the same day, she wrote words of gratitude for the gift and kind words. She also said that I am beautiful. I really want to invite her somewhere or somehow get closer, but I'm very afraid that in our country they don't really like LGBT people. Wait, which, which country is that? I don't know. Okay. They exist, but they're few. I'm afraid she'll think I'm crazy. Besides, I understand that she has thousands of patients like me. I'm so lost. I really don't know what to do. Uh, on the other side, what do I have to lose? She's my doctor, and when the rehab is over, in a year, our communication will stop. And if I try, there may be two options that she doesn't want to talk to me, or maybe we can be with, together. Please send me your thoughts. What's your... Uh... What's my take? Yeah. Well, I mean, I understand the situation. If you live in a country where lesbian thing is not very acceptable, mm -hmm. she might be homophobic, like internalized homophobia. Mm -hmm. Even if she is gay or if she has feelings for women, um, they might not be safe like for her to explore with you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I guess you're ready for that. Um, so I say go for it. What do you have to lose? Literally nothing. Yeah, you give. Uh, yeah, you give yourself the answer, the right answer. You know, th there are two outcomes. One, she, you know, she says, you know, she rejects you, and the other one is like she likes you as well. So there's not. But I'm. I'm I can feel that you already figured it out, so trust yourself um, about what to do in this case and uh, just go for it and uh, whatever the outcome is, you know, you, you're going you're gonna to move on and um, yeah, so that, that's, that's my take. Yeah, there's, there's really not much to say except just go for it, you Yeah, know, experience your, what you're going to experience and if nothing, you have some dating experience and that's not a bad thing. Right. Yeah. Make you move. Be bold. <laughs> Maybe she is gay. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you ask for a co color analysis, just wait until the end of this video and I'll do your color palette for you. Okay. Just two people are up to me, so it's fine. Nice. 
Do you want to read one or I'm, I'm reading? You can read. Dear Sadie and P, I hope all is well for you and Paula. I've been following your channel for a long time. Your relationship with P was new when the time I discovered your channel. All this time I followed and watched many of your videos. I heard you say in some of your videos that you've been very successful at school since your childhood and teenage years, even going to a highly respected boarding school. But then I guess that you didn't go to college and chose not to do corporate or what society considers a real profession. I wonder why you didn't choose the life expected of you by not continuing such a successful, perfectionist, and well-rounded education life. If it's not too private, can you talk about it? Because I've been a very perfectionist, ambitious person throughout my life, and as a result, I've been a constant success. I've had a great career, but this career didn't happen because I wanted it. I don't know how to survive otherwise, and I know I won't be accepted by my family and other people, at least that's how I feel. If you ask me, I would like to live in a village, spending time with the soil and reaping my own crops and feeding my animals. Hustle has become something that constantly steals from my soul. That's why I'm curious about the experiences of someone who walked the same path as me and chose a different path. Sending my love to you, and Paula. I hope you continue to live your best life. Uh, no, it's not too private. I can definitely answer it. Um, so you asked why I stopped pursuing the life society wanted me to lead and the answer is quite simple I burned out I burned the fuck out and I don't know if it's because of I had PTSD uh, or I had depression or just because I was autistic and I was absolutely like destroyed by the time I got to 18 I mean by that point, I couldn't even manage to go to school day to day. In fact, I never graduated. So it's not that I chose a particular path, it's that I couldn't keep going the same path I've been going my whole life. Like I just ran out of energy. It's crazy when that happens to you, like your body literally says no. And I could not find the energy, energy to get out of bed in the mornings. Like I didn't have the energy to focus on the words that somebody was talking to me. It's like I was listening, but I couldn't even hear anything, you know? It's, it's like I had brain damage all of a sudden and I couldn't do it anymore. And I still feel like that. Like if I had to go back and take yeah. a class that I had in high school, I think I would just be looking at the teacher like going, what the hell is going on? Because I can't receive that information anymore. My brain just said, fuck off. <laughs> So yeah, it wasn't my choice, but I'm kind of glad that I ended up in this path because like you said, this corporate, you know, capitalistic society is not made for people. Not even just people like us, it's not made for people. Like, it destroys your soul. I mean, you're the person that actually went down that path and like did what your parents wanted. Yeah. yeah. So like, how was your experience of that? Yeah, at one point, you know, I realized that it's uh, uh, it's just what society wants. Like, it, it takes you away from yourself. Uh, it, it distracts you from uh, uh, discovering yourself, pretty much. So, and what you really do in this life is really discovering yourself. And, uh, which is not about discovering what you need. Like, I was talking to another person the other day, and uh, she was telling me that uh, she still doesn't know what to do. And, uh, and she's a very young person and uh, I guess she's close to graduating, something like that. You know, she still don't know what to do. So, and, and many people are in the same position. What to do? It's, it's almost like your identity is based on doing something, on having a profession, uh, specializing into something and so on and so forth. Whereas people still have hard time to understand you know that your identity is not based on what you do it's really discovering your true self and uh, that's what happened to me very late in life uh, I spent 45 um, my first 45 years you know pursuing careers and studying and this and that and working and, and it didn't give me anything like absolutely anything. It was feeding my ego, yes, but it wasn't feeding a part of me. It, it, it's always like, it feels like there's always something that is missing. Always, always something is missing. And then you understand, oh, 
what was missing in the equation was myself. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, and also like not basing your self-worth on doing what other people expect you to do because I was doing that like all my life and that's why I was a perfectionist I wanted to be you know perceived well like I'm this amazing I'm amazing at this so I'm a good person right and when I went through my burnout and I couldn't do anything anymore like my ego was destroyed because I was all of a sudden nothing you know like everybody I could almost feel my old schoolmates and my parents looking at me like what happened to you why are you so low now like you were so you were like this now you're like this what happened but it's not like that at all like everybody on this planet is equal whether you're like a high achieving ceo or like a farmer and the fact that we place human worth on success is like a highly capitalistic brainwashed idea yeah you know so um, if you can break out of that and you can find a way to lead a life that feeds your soul um i would definitely say do that you know do that it's also better for your health like for your physical and mental health right yeah right so um i guess we'll leave it at that and since we're starting to sweat (laughs) but we'll be back really soon with another dear sadian p video because we have more letters to read yes and um yeah thank you so much for watching thank you we'll see you next time thank you we love you bye bye okay now you can go but i'm gonna do the color palette oh okay okay (laughs) she's like i'm leaving i'm out (laughs) so i'm gonna do the color palette for two people that sent me an email okay and I'll show you guys what I did. So the first person that wrote to me was Anna. Okay, so Anna sent me this picture for me to figure out what her color palette is. And I noticed immediately, like, this is not her color. Um, This doesn't bring out her own vibrancy. So first I realized she's not a cool tone because this is what she's wearing. The outfit is cool green. If she was a cool tone, she would look good in it. So I figure she's warm. So if you're warm, you're either an autumn or a spring. And if you're cool, you're a summer or a winter. So I just had to figure out if she's an autumn or a spring, but I tested it out anyway. So I put her in a warm green and like immediately her natural beauty started shining through. Your eye just goes to her face and her beauty instead of the outfit. So that's how you know it's your color. So then I put her in a gray and she doesn't look bad in gray, but then I put her in gold. And like, you can see the difference between the gray and the gold. The gold just brings out her vibrancy. The gray kind of drains her, you know? So the gold is the warm, the gray is the cool. And then I put her in a cool toned yellow. And again, it's not bad, but the warm mustard yellow was like so much more vibrant. I put her in white, she looks okay. I put her in cream, she looks, you know, effortlessly beautiful. And so I kept putting her in colors with my crude um, Photoshop of turtlenecks in colors that look good on her. So these are some of her colors. And what I determined is that you are also an autumn because you look good in warm colors, and but they're also muted. Like you don't look good in very bright warm colors. And th- this is how I figured that out. This is a muted yet orange and she looks really good in it. This is a bright orange it's too too bright for her she doesn't look good in that another example would be like this is a muted um red she looks beautiful stunning this is a bright red this would be like a spring and she doesn't look that good so there you go you are in autumn and here's your color palette if you would like to see all the other color palettes i actually posted all of them on my instagram so i'll put my instagram right here so you can go check those out you can do this on yourself you don't need me to do it You can just um, figure out if you're warm or cool and then if you look better in bright colors or more muted colors. So the other person that wrote to me was Liz. Thank you, Liz. And I put her also in gray and she looked a bit drained and I put her in mustard yellow and she looked beautiful. And she also sent me this photo of her in a yellow sweater. So I already knew she looked good in like warm tones. So I already had this clue. Springs look good in super bright colors. Autumns look good in more Uh, faded muted colors so I put her in a couple of things and I quickly noticed she is also an autumn however what makes Liz different than Anna is that she looks better in more faded autumn colors 
So if you put her in something a little bit more vibrant, it takes away from her. And if you put her in something more faded, it like adds to her natural beauty. So I'll put some examples of some of her best colors right here. And so I determined you are an autumn, but you are a faded autumn. Now, usually they don't say that. Like I made these palettes myself. It's on my Instagram, but yeah, this is your colors. These are your best colors. Obviously you can wear whatever color you want, but this is just like a rough guideline. Okay, that's it for my color analysis. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.